Okay, so we've looked at the reactions of alkanes and we've looked at the reactions of alkenes for the addition across a double bond. Now we're going to look at the reactions of alcohols and this will provide us a look at a number of different reactions, including redox reactions. So remembering going back to our unit on redox, we do need to be able to balance redox equations for these potentially as well. So when we talk about the oxidation of alcohols, there are a couple of reagents that we're primarily going to use. We're going to be talking about dichromate, and we are, of course, talking about acidified conditions. So we are going to be talking about acidified dichromate, and this could be potassium dichromate, um, typically, and then sometimes you will see this notation here, which simply means oxidation. We are talking about oxidation reactions, so this will typically be going from alcohol to aldehyde and then carboxylic acid. The aldehyde is the partially oxidized product of an alcohol, and then the fully, and then we've got the carboxylic acid is going to be further oxidized. Okay, and of course, the complete oxidation of an alcohol would be combustion, where we go to through to CO2. So when we're talking about this, this is of course a redox reaction where the alcohol is being oxidized. So the alcohol, the alcohol, the organic compound containing the alcohol is going to be oxidized. So we are going to be losing electrons from that. And then this here, our oxidizing agent, is going to be reduced. So you may remember that we talked about with the oxidizing agents when we had Cr2O7 2 minus in acidic conditions, this went to 2 Cr3 plus and this was a, react, a reduction reaction. The other strong oxidizing agent that we have seen is M uh, permanganate, which is our MnO4 minus in acidic conditions will go to MN2 plus, and then in order to balance these properly, we would use COHES, okay? So in this case, these would be our reduction half equations, and then our oxidation half equation would be ethanol through to ethanol, or ethanol through to ethanolic acid, or even ethanol through to ethanolic acid as a complete reaction. So let's start looking at the reaction conditions for these. With the aldehyde and the carboxylic acid, the aldehyde is actually a transition state, or it's a step along the way. Okay, so if we want to get the aldehyde, we need to capture it and get it out of the reaction system before it further oxidizes into the carboxylic acid. We do this via distillation. Typically, we would have an excess of the alcohol so that there isn't enough to take it all the way through the carboxylic acid. But what we will do is the aldehyde will have a lower boiling point than the alcohol. So as we heat, the aldehyde will come up the tube. Sorry, wrong way. We will have our reagents going on over here, our ethanol. We will heat it up. The aldehyde has a lower boiling point because it can't undergo hydrogen bonding like the alcohol, and then it will drip down the condensing flask. This has water running through it to cool it down, and we will grab the aldehyde over here using distillation to do so. If we want to take it all the way through to the carboxylic acid, we will have a process known as reflux. You'll notice this is not on an angle. It's not set up like the distillation apparatus. What we're doing here is we are boiling this solution. The vapor comes up, hits the cold surface, condenses and drips back down. This is like reflux. If you've ever had stomach reflux where you have acid coming up and going back down, similar kind of thing. But we're using condensation up here, cool surface of the glass to call it, uh, cause it to drip back down. And essentially this allows us to boil the mixture without it, no boiling dry. Okay, because we're condensing it back down, the vapor is not escaping, 
and we can continually add heat to this reaction mixture to force the reaction along. Again, the reagents for this is both going to be the same. It's acidified dichromate or acidified permanganate. So when you're asked for the conditions for the oxidation reactions, you need to specify the acidified oxidizing agent. So it has to be under acid conditions, because remember we don't do basic conditions in VCE. So it will be H plus and MnO4 minus or H plus Cr2O7 2 minus. This is acidified, if we're asked to name it, acidified permanganate. and then acidified dichromate. Either of these are strong enough oxidizing agents to oxidize our primary alcohols through to carboxylic acids. Okay, so we need to have our acidified oxidizing agent, we need heat, and we need to specify if it is being distilled, which is the aldehyde, or refluxed, which is going to take us through to the carboxylic acid. Of note, it's important to note that this is primary alcohol. So we are talking about a hydroxyl that is attached to a carbon with two other hydrogens attached. And the other thing to note, remembering that these re redox reagents have colors associated with them. So for the purple permanganate, it will go from purple to colorless if the redox reaction has occurred or orange to green for the dichromate reaction. When we talk about oxidation of secondary and tertiary alcohols, we end up with different products. In this case, because we have a secondary alcohol, the OH, the hydroxyl, is attached to a carbon with two other carbons attached and a hydrogen. When this is oxidized, we will produce the ketone, okay? Remembering primary alcohols are on the end of the chain, we will get the aldehyde or the carboxylic acid. But if we oxidize a secondary alcohol using the same reagent, the oxidation product will be the ketone. In the case of a tertiary alcohol, the hydroxyl is attached to a carbon with no hydrogens attached to it, it's all alkyl groups, it will not react under the conditions that we have talked about. So in this case where the ketone will decolorize permanganate, we will get the purple through the colorless or it will change dichromate from orange to green as the redox reaction occurs, the same as what we see for primary alcohols. This is not the case with tertiary alcohols. We would add these strong oxidizing agents and they would stay the same initial color because the reaction will not occur. And in that case, we would know that we have a tertiary alcohol. The other reaction that alcohols can undergo is, of course, esterification. Esters are products of the condensation reaction. Okay, the previous reactions were redox reactions. When we're talking condensation reaction, we are condensing two molecules into one larger molecule with the production of water. So we're going to produce a water molecule. Our inorganic byproduct in this case is water. And then we will form an organic ester, larger molecule, along with this. In all the previous reactions, we haven't seen an extension of the carbon chain. The molecule itself doesn't get bigger unless we're talking polymerization. With esterification, of course, because we're joining two molecules together, the final product molecule is actually going to be larger and we lose the inorganic bright product of water. The esters formed are sweet smelling. They're typically insoluble and form layers on top of the water, while the unreacted sulfuric acid that we use to catalyze this reaction will dissolve into the water away from the final organic product. So for our esterification, we have the carboxyl of one molecule reacting with the hydroxyl of another, in the presence of a sulfuric acid catalyst, okay, typically concentrated, so we say conch H2SO4, we produce the ester functional group and water. This is a condensation reaction. 
The product here in this case will be ethyl ethanoate, remembering that the ill comes from the alcohol and the anoate includes the carbonyl carbon and is from the carboxylic acid. They will have the general formula R, C, double bond O, R, or R prime if the alkyl group is different. And the name is the two word name coming from both the alcohol and the carboxyl. So this is a sterification reaction, okay? Remembering is a reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. It can be reversed, and the reverse of the esterification is hydrolysis. In condensation, we produce a molecule of water. In hydrolysis, we add water back in. So I want you to pause this video, have a go at drawing these following esters, and have a go at naming them as well, and then come back to check the answers. Okay, hopefully you came up with these products remembering each one would require concentrated h2so4 to catalyze the reaction and in the condensation reaction we would end up with methyl propanoate plus of course our water molecule don't forget our water molecule this will be a liquid and so would this we would have pentyl ethanoate again plus a water molecule and then this one here we don't have to we don't have to name branched esters but this is methanoic acid here. So in this case, we would form a methanoate ester. Okay, so again, plus H2O. So hopefully you are confident with your esterification reactions. And now we have looked at the bulk of the reactions that we need to look at. And when we put all these together, we get pathways. You need to be able to propose a sequence of reactions to synthesize the products over a number of steps, and that you need to include the catalyst reagents and the reaction conditions. We will practice this a lot by looking at practice questions, proposing how we would make different reactions. Okay, the other one reaction here, this is a condensation reaction between an amine and a carboxyl to give the carboxamide or the amide, okay? In this case, again, it's a condensation reaction. We do not necessarily have to know the full conditions for this one. We'll create a giant mind map in class and then use this to help solve the questions as we go through pathways. But for now, that's it for all our reactions and I will see you in class.